Autolite and its 96,000 dealers bring you Miss Deborah Carr in a story based on fact. Tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents the story of a girl who chose a most dangerous way of making a living and bet her life on its success. A story true except for changes in names and places, which we call The Lady Pamela, starring Miss Deborah Carr. This is Harlow Wilcox. I was visiting Sam, my neighborhood Autolite spark plug dealer, the other day when his phone rang. Hello? Yes, sir. Uh Uh-huh. Well, it may be spark plug trouble because spark plugs are the very heart of your car's ignition system. Better let me and my plug check indicator take a look. That's the exclusive Autolite plug check indicator, which instantly shows the exact condition of your spark plugs and whether they're right for your style of driving. Well, they may only need cleaning. But if new ones are needed, I'll install Autolite resistor or standard-type spark plugs. They're world famous. Yes, sir. And when you replace worn-out spark plugs with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, you get smoother performance, quick starts, and gas savings. You know our location, sir? Okay, see you soon. And friends, to quickly learn the location of your nearest Autolite spark plug dealer, just call Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Deborah Carr is appearing by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Singing in the Rain, starring Gene Kelly, Donald O'Connor, and Debbie Reynolds. And now, Autolite presents The Lady Pamela, starring Miss Deborah Carr, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Mr. Tillett, I'm afraid that I'm taking up too much of your time. Not at all, Miss Bond. Not at all. I mean, you've shown me so many beautiful things that I I simply can't decide. It's extremely naughty of you to have so many lovely... My dear lady, such jewels as these were made only to adorn one such as yourself. The afternoon is yours, and with it, my services. How sweet of you. Now, this is a tiara. (gasps) Oh! Perfectly, Mr. Tillett. I want you to notice the rubies here. And the exquisite workmanship of the filigree. I daren't ask. It's priceless, I know, but... Fifty thousand dollars. No, I've got to be sensible. It's quite out of the question. Now, what about the necklace? Twenty-four thousand. The brooch and earrings? Eighteen. Oh, they're adorable. And the diamond? Fourteen thousand for you, Miss Bond. I should really close my eyes. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'm... Oh. Keep your hands on the bell, but friend, and nobody's going to get hurt. You lady, just sit there and don't open your mouth or I'll close it for you. You're... This is... This is... Hold up. We'll take that, please. Don't you dare touch me. I... Oh! Okay. Thanks for everything. So long. David Archer, don't you? Of yes. course. <laughs> Do sit down. Uh, Have you ordered, Colonel? I'm famished. I did. We were only waiting for you, my dear. No trouble? No, not a bit. Everything went off splendidly. Good. David, that slap. It was a little too realistic. Don't ever do it again. Well, look, I was only I'm trying taking to do... 500 out of your cut for that. You're to follow orders. Nothing else. Listen, if you think you That's can get away... That's exactly the point, David. I do think you don't. Phyllis might have seen a scar on your wrist when you slapped me. You've got a record. You could be identified by that. Follow orders in the future. Oh, now, 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 children. Be quiet, Halliday. Do you understand, David? Yeah. Sorry. All right. When are you disposing of the things, Halliday? I, <clears throat> I'm flying to San Francisco tomorrow. Good. 
Today's the 10th. We'll meet at my flat on the 15th, 8 o'clock. That should give you enough time. Oh, ample, my dear, ample. David, hmm? where are you staying? Join on 84th Street, off the park. I think it would be better if you move to a hotel. Change your name, too. Don't phone me. Send a note to the usual place. Sure. Ah, oh, here we are, dinner. The finest food in New York, my dear. Just wait. <laughs> You'll see. We had done much better than I thought we would. Although I didn't expect Halliday to sell for more than 40000 in San Francisco. I remember, as I brushed my hair before going to bed that night, that I felt almost sorry for Mr. Tillett. But he was such an old roué. Next time, he'd know better. Wicked little eyes. I didn't get up until 11 the next morning. It was a wonderful day, bright and clear. I was having my second cup of coffee when... Yes? Police. Miss Barnes? Yes, uh, just a moment. I'm awfully sorry, I... I All right, Miss Barnes, may I come in? My name's Boland, robbery detail. Well, I suppose so. I, I think you might have telephoned first. Did you find the jewels? Not yet. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Oh, I thought I'd answered them all yesterday. No, miss. Oh. Uh, would you like some coffee? No, thanks. Oh, please sit down. You make me feel awkward. I'm sorry. Now, Mr. Boland. You know a man named Archer, Miss Barnes, David Archer? No. No, I don't think so. He was picked up this morning. We think that he was one of the men in the robbery yesterday. Really? He was identified by a scar on his wrist. Mr. Tillett remembered it. Oh, how wonderful. But there were two men. Yes, we know. You're sure you don't know, aren't you? No, I'm positive I don't. You've never met him? No. You sound as though you think I should, Mr. Bowen. You were followed after the robbery, Miss Barnes. You went to a restaurant on East 53rd Street. You had dinner there with two men. One of them was Archer. <laughs> That's ridiculous. No. Our man didn't know it was Archer until this morning when Mr. Tillich telegraphed. He was identified. The detective who followed you recognized Archer. I'm afraid you're mistaken, Mr. Boland. We're not. The whole thing was too nicely timed. Who was the other man? Really? I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Get dressed, please, Miss Barnes. You'll have to come downtown. Am I under arrest? Let's say you're a material witness. It sounds better. I don't think I was frightened. I was terribly annoyed, though. But at least they hadn't got Halliday. Mr. Boland questioned me in a dirty little office at police headquarters. He wasn't at all like a Scotland Yard man. He smoked, allowed me to smoke. His first name was Jack, and he was rather nice-looking. Name? Pamela Kittredge Barnes. Age? 24. Mm. Height and weight? 5 feet 4, 119 pounds. Mm -hmm. Scars or marks? Um, no. Nationality? British. Married? No. Previous convictions? None. You know we'll check with the other side on that. I imagine that you will. And when the questioning was finished, they released me. Perhaps Mr. Boland thought that I'd lead him to Halliday. I didn't, but I got in touch by telephone. Oh, you just caught me. I was on my way to the airport. Anything wrong? The police have arrested David. They questioned me this morning. I'm free at the moment. Oh, rock, rock. Now, look here, there's not much time. I know they'll get in touch with Scotland Yard about me. And when they do, I won't have a chance. Uh, I suppose not. A couple of men followed me from police headquarters, so I can't very well get away. But, Halliday... Yes, dear? I want to know where I can reach you. Uh, when? Later, if they put me away, so I can get my money. Well, uh, as soon as...
as I get back from San Francisco, I'll phone you. If something's happened, a uh, word would have got around. Now, don't worry. When you get out, the money will be here waiting for you. Where? I'll get in touch. I'm a stash now, darling. The plane. All the best. Halliday. Good afternoon, Miss Barnes. Oh, Mr. Bowen. I thought... We just received a cable from Scotland Yard about you. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to pack your things. This time, you're arresting me, aren't you? That's right. David Archer got ten years. I spent two years, nine months, and 14 days in prison. And I was nearly 27 when I went back to New York. The first thing I did was to get my hair done. Halliday hadn't been in touch with me, but I realized it might have been too dangerous. The police and the insurance company were still looking for the jewels. So I began to look for Halliday. I telephoned every hotel in New York and every possible contact that Halliday might have had. And at the end of a month, I knew what had happened. He'd gone, run out, leaving no word, and my share of the money had gone with him. Hello? Miss Barnes? Yes? My name's Robert Wiley. I'm downstairs in the bar. I'd like to come up and talk to you for a few minutes. I don't think I... No, you don't know me, but I've heard about you. Oh? Some people have been saying that you're looking for somebody. People? Yeah. They say you're looking for someone called Halliday. Do they? Uh, listen, I'm not a cop, if that's what you mean. Now, can I come up? I'm not in the habit of receiving strangers in my hotel room, Mr. Wiley. If you'll wait a few minutes, I'll come down. Okay, I'll wait for you here in the bar. What will you be wearing? Um, a gray tweed coat. Right. Clever of you. You too? I was. Hmm. What was it you wanted to see me about? A deal. What kind of a deal? I'll sell you Colonel Halliday. You know where he is? That's right. I haven't any money. But you will have when you find Halliday. Who told you about me? About Halliday? Halliday? I've been working for him. At least I was up until a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we didn't agree on a couple of things, and he ended up double-crossing me. How much do you want? Fifty-fifty. Partner. Too much, Mr. Wiley. Much too much. I don't think so. Halliday's a big shot now. You're going to need help. You couldn't do it without me. Did he tell you how much he got for the job? Fifty thousand. Oh. Well, what do you say? All right. Where is he? Partners? Yes. Where is he, Mr. Wiley? Of course, there's uh, one little thing. What's that? He said if he ever saw me again, he'd kill me. Isn't that going to make it rather awkward? I mean, for you? Well, it might. Unless, well, that's where you come in. Exactly how do I come in, Mr. Wiley? Well, I thought it might be awkward for Halliday to knock me off if we get to him first. In other words, before you tell me where he is, I have to agree to help you kill him. Is that the idea? If you want your dough, that's the idea. I want my dough, Mr. Wiley. Where is he? Bringing you Miss Deborah Carr in The Lady Pamela. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Hey, uh, Sam.
Sam, you really go for the exclusive Autolite plug check indicator, eh? Sure do, Mr. Wilcox. It's a quick, sure check on the exact condition of your car's spark plugs. I go for that plug check indicator just like drivers go for those great Autolite spark plugs. And great is right, Sam, for those ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs are designed by the same Autolite engineers who design the coil, distributor, and all the other important parts of complete ignition systems used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. And boy, that Autolite resistor-type spark plug is really something. It sure is, Sam. The new Autolite resistor type gives double life and greater gas savings as compared to spark plugs without a built-in resistor. And it's only one of a complete line of ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs designed for every use. So have your Autolite spark plug dealer check your spark plug soon. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Miss Deborah Carr in Elliot Lewis's production of The Lady Pamela, a dramatic report well calculated to keep you in suspense. Halliday was in London, and a week after our meeting, Robert Wiley and I booked passage on the first steamer. It was the second day of our departure. I remember the night, lovely and clear. Wiley had gone to buy a packet of cigarettes. I was leaning over the rail, watching the flashes of phosphorus, and the water was endless. You want to be careful leaning over the rail like that? <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, I wouldn't want to be in it. Can't you swim, Mr. Wiley? Oh, listen, now, let's forget that Wiley stuff. Bob. Okay? Okay. Uh, how does a girl like you get mixed up with Halliday? I wasn't mixed up with him. He was mixed up with me. There's a difference, you know. You... He worked for you. That's right. Are you kidding? Not at all. Why should I? Well, from what he says, you were the front girl, and he worked out the deal. The colonel used to be an actor. I don't think he can bear second billing. Oh, you're quite a girl. And are you quite a boy? I've been told. I say, why? I know you feel that because you're a man, you have to behave like one, but don't ever do that again. I don't get that. I have no intention of letting you. You'd better understand this. You and I have a business arrangement. I want my money... You want to take care of the colonel. We'll keep to that. Okay. Don't you ever relax. I relaxed for two years, nine months, and 14 days in prison. I feel like working now. Do you understand? No, but if that's the way you want it. It is. And if you ever try to touch me again, we are finished. <laughs> Three days later, we were in London. We found a nondescript hotel in Chelsea and laid doggo for a time. It wasn't going to be easy. The colonel was a very top dog in black market, and we both knew that if he ever found out that Wiley was in England, there'd be trouble. It was Wiley's idea that I go to see him in his flat, but I thought an accidental meeting would be better, and so we planned it that way. I bumped into the colonel at Piccadilly Circus. Oh, Beg your pardon. I, I'm so sorry. Ham, I say it is you. Colonel, I'd no oh, idea. Oh, this is marvelous. I mean, absolutely marvelous. How long have you been over here? Only a few weeks. Oh, marvelous. Oh, you're lovely as ever, lovely. Look, sir, could we have a cocktail together? Talk over old times? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, marvelous. How about Scott? They know me there. We went to Scott's, and on the way, he prattled about England, his England, and of the old days in America, and it was all quite respectable talk. The colonel was a striking man, wore his clothes beautifully, and walked with the carriage you'd expect from a man who looked like that. They knew him very well in the restaurant. I began to see that this was not the same Halliday I had known three years before. We sipped our drinks, and it was all like a very exciting play. 
he knew I was going to ask him about the money from the robbery. And I knew that my partner was going to kill him. <laughs> well, things are not quite the way they were, although I suppose one must put up with it. <laughs> Mustn't one? <laughs> you seem to have done nicely, Colonel. Oh, my lovely girl. It's all a matter of comparison, purely. Comparison to the jobs we used to do on the other side? Oh, darling. Those are trifles. <laughs> I have no time for such nonsense now. Neither have I. What did you do with the jewels? Uh, Jewels? Yes. The ones we got from Tillett's. Remember? You went to San Francisco. By Jove, of course. What a marvelous memory you have his mouth. Isn't it? Yes. It's rather a bad show, I'm afraid. I was hijacked, as our American cousin so quaintly put it. Who did it? I don't know. It, it happened in San Francisco. Oh. Yes. And then when I heard what had happened to you and uh, Archer... I gave up and came home to England. You were awfully lucky, weren't you? Oh, not really. But... Now, it's strange because I heard that you got $50,000 in San Francisco. No. Yes. Rot. <laughs> Who said so? Wiley. Robert Wiley. Wiley? And who is Robert Wiley? Oh, what's the use of all that, Colonel? You know very well. As a matter of fact, I have the slightest idea of what you're talking about. I, I gather that I'm supposed to be on close terms with this Wiley chap. That's right. I see. Huh. Well, you can only believe one of us, can't you? And I tell you, I have never even heard of the man. I do know you better than I know him, Colonel. Then you take my word, eh? No. I take his. I'd like my share, Halliday. My dear child. I want my share. What can I say? I know what you've been through. I think of poor Archer still incarcerated, but on my word of honor, Pam, I didn't get a brass farthing. I want my money now. Oh, Pam, Pam, you're, you're too marvelous. I mean it. Darling girl, things have changed, you know. Over here, I'm the man. I don't take orders anymore. And if I did, it wouldn't be from a woman. Certainly not from you, Pam. You're much too emancipated, even for me. I think I would have killed him then, in Scots. If I'd had a gun or a knife, I would have killed him. And as I walked to the underground station, I did something I can never remember having done before. I cried. When I got back to the hotel, I went to Wiley's room and told him what had happened. We were agreed we would have to work fast. And so that night, we went to Halliday's flat. Uh, who is it? Pam! May I speak to you for a minute? Oh, darling. Oh. Hello, Colonel. Dear girl, how are you? Come in, come in, come in. Thanks. Oh, twice in one day. You surprised me, Pam. But then you always did. Do sit down, won't you? And your young man? Um, uh, drinks? No, thank you. Well, then. Uh, what shall we talk about? You. Oh, I say, in front of this gentleman? You know you haven't introduced me, Pam. Are you kidding I never kid. You're a rotten liar. I may be, but I should still like to know... Oh, this must be uh, Robert Wiley. Am I right? There's not much point to this. No. I want my money, Halliday. Of course. And what do you want, Wiley? Never mind. <laughs> you know, this is almost funny, Pam. I don't know what you're up to, but I've really never seen this chap before in my life. You think she's going to believe that? Well, probably not. You can give me Archer's share, too. Oh, how thoughtful of you. And you'll see that he gets it, won't you? Yes. Come on, come on, the money. Oh, yes. Tell me, Wiley, where did we know each other? When? What do you think you're going to do? Play me off against her? No, not at all. I'm just interested. Colonel. Yes, sir? When you open the safe, please be careful. Oh. A gun now, eh? Yes. Put it away. My God. Huh. I underestimated you, my dear. I shouldn't have done that. 
Well, you will have to take it in pounds, you know. That's all right. Poor Archer. I wonder if he'll look for you when he gets out. He might. Hurry up, please. Uh, will you tell me one thing? What? Who is this man, really? Hand it over. Why are you afraid to let me talk, Mr. Wiley? Don't you want her to find out the truth? Give me the money. Look out for him, Pam, dear. I don't know what he's been telling you, but... I'm going to tell you something now. I swore to myself that if I ever found you, I'd pay you out for what you did to me. I'd get my money and I'd pay you. I'm going to, Colonel. He wants to do it, but I owe you more. Oh, Pam. No. Pam! Oh, you silly. Oh, oh. Give me the... I've been telling you the truth, Pam. I've never seen him in my life. Why did you have to do that? Because I wanted to. You must be crazy. Come on. You're not going anywhere. Oh, stop it. Come on. You stay right there. I've got to call the police. Police? Yes. Maybe you should have listened to him. What do you mean? I'm with International Insurance Company, a New York office. We knew the jewels had been sold, but we wanted to recover as much of the money as we could. You didn't know him? No. But I knew you'd be looking for him when you got out. We wanted to get you both together. Don't. Wait a moment. What? On the boat coming over, remember? You wanted to kiss me. Uh Uh-huh. Perhaps I've changed my mind now. I think I have, too. I don't think we'd be happy together. You're not exactly my idea of the ideal wife, you know? If I ever get out, I'm going to kill you. If you ever get out, I deserve to get killed. Oh, hello, Scotland Yard. I want to report a murder. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Miss Deborah Carr. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry, the many leading manufacturers who install Autolite products as original equipment. Our Autolite family is made up of the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants. It also includes more than 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite, as well as 96,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Tomorrow night, Autolite will present the national television preview of the great Parade of Stars automobile show from the Grand Ballroom of New York's Waldorf Astoria Hotel. This program may be seen at the regular Autolite Suspense television time tomorrow night or a few days later in some television areas. Don't miss this great program. And remember to be with us next week for another thrilling Autolite Suspense show on radio. Next week on Suspense, our star will be Mr. Dan Durier in a dramatization from your morning newspaper. The dramatic report of a cold-blooded killing and the awful consequences to its only witness. The story will be called Remember Me, and it will be heard on Suspense. The Lady Pamela was written for Suspense by Anthony Ellis. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. In tonight's story, Ben Wright was heard as Robert Wiley and Joseph Kearns as Halliday. Featured in the cast were Peter Leeds, Larry Thor, and Ted Osborne. The Electric Autolite Company salutes the Boys Clubs of America on this first day of National Boys Club Week. Boys Clubs serve the boy, the community, and the nation. An investment in boys is an investment in America's future. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>